This is the write-up for the Integrity February Exercise Challenge. Let's get into it. This challenge is still available on challenge-o222.integrity.io. But if you want to be the first person to hear about a new challenge dropping, then please do follow us on Twitter at Integrity. However, for now, we can take a look at this challenge. So this is the page that explains all of the rules. However, if we scroll down, we can test our payloads on the challenge page right there, which I have open right now. This page welcomes us to the XSS, the extremely short scripting game. And we have this cute little character that says, hey, choose a name for your character. And the rules are that this name can't be empty and it can't be longer than 24 characters. So let's try inputting a name. So for example, if I input pink draconian and I've never played this game before and I submit, then it says, welcome back pink draconian. Okay, well, that's all cool and fun, but I want to know what is going on in the browser. What is happening when I submit my name? Let's find out by opening the inspector tools. And if we do, we see that we have this container with all the things and we see that we have this script. And if I open the script, we see that this is, well, a script. So let's dig into the script to see what is going on and what our browser is doing. I've put all the code quickly in this document so that we can go through it. First of all, we start by setting window.name to this string. That's not important. We continue by declaring a function here, show modal, which takes in a title and a content parameter. And what is it going to do with that? Well, first it's going to grab two DOM elements, the title and the content, so an H3 and a P, and then it will set the inner HTML directly to the values of those parameters. Now, inner HTML is dangerous to use because if you're able to input user input into inner HTML, then you can potentially get an XSS with very simple payloads. So good to know that this show modal function, if it's being used with any of these fields being user input, then we can potentially get an XSS. Now, if we look down here, we see that there are two occurrences of show modal in this script. Now, the first one is just gonna have strings as the arguments. So that's not important to us. However, the second one has QS as the content and QS is a variable. So let's follow that variable down and let's see where that comes from. So we see that here it comes from URI, which is being split, and URI comes from location.href. And that's something that we can control. We can control the URL. So that's a very interesting one to look into. Maybe that way we can get some user input into that inner HTML. So we can check out how we get there by looking at, first of all, this if statements. And that's just gonna say, well, if our URL includes Q equals, that's an easy one to, to get around. So yes, let me just make it include Q equals. Then we are going to do a decode URI component of location.href. Now decode URI component is going to decode all the HTML encoded characters into their normal characters. So uh, that doesn't really change a lot. Um, but so our location.href is still being used. Then we will create our QS variable, which will be made by splitting URI on and first equals and splitting URI on Q equals. And if you look at that statement closer, you will notice that all this does is take the, uh, the value of the QGet parameter. So we take that value of the QGet parameter and that's QS. And we show that in our modal, but only if the QS.length is less than or equal to 24. So only if it's less than or equal to 24 characters, we will show it. So now we have a way where... Um, we have some user inputs that's being used in a vulnerable function. However, we can only have it be up to 24 characters. How do we get around that? How do we get an XSS to go in there? That's what we're gonna check out now. Let's see if we can use all of that knowledge to get a simple XSS going here. So the first thing I'm gonna try is just try a simple XSS with, for example, an image tag. And that image tag is going to have a source or source can be X, which doesn't exist. So an on error will trigger and that will trigger an alert. And if I run that, we see that we get an error. The length exceeds 24, keep it short. So, okay, that's not short enough. Um, so where do we go next? Well, we, we can do a Google for tiny XSS payloads. And that will get us to uh, this page by Terion Q 
who uh, has also written another challenge uh, for the Antiquity Monthly XSS Challenges. And he has this page with all of these very short payloads. So let's pick one of these. Let's pick this SVG one and let's go back to the challenge and let's try that one out. So I'm just gonna paste it in the URL bar and instead of doing an eval of name, we just want to do an alert. And if I execute that, we get our alert. That's great, that's amazing. We've solved the challenge, right? Well, not quite, because on the page, on the main page explaining the rules, it says that the solution should execute alert document.domain. And currently we're just executing an alert. So let's try to execute alert document.domain. And well, now our length exceeds 24 again and we have to keep it short again. Okay, that's quite a bummer. But looking at this tiny XSS payloads page gave me an ID because we saw this eval here. And this eval is gonna eval, in this case, name. What happens if we try to eval name? Well, if I do that, so I change this onload back to eval name, now we see that we get an error in our console. Uh, there's a missing, uh, missing closing brace here, but the SVG element onload was called. Okay, but what did it try to call? Well, our name is XSS extremely short scripting game. And we don't have any way of modifying that. So that's kind of, well, that's not really the way to go. However, when looking at our source code earlier, we saw that there's some other variables there that are declared using var. And one thing you should know about using var is that the scope of those variables will be global. So those are these are globally scoped. And that is, for example, not the case if you use let um, for your variables. But in this case, they are globally scoped. So if I take, pick one, for example, QS, and I type that in the console, we will see that it knows about QS. It knows what QS is. And it also knows about URI, because those are the two variables that are globally scoped. Uh, we control QS, but we know that QS has to be very, very short. However, we also control the URI, and that can be any length that we want. So if we, for example, change this from eval name to eval URI, now we get that same error in the console, but now we are evaluating something that we control. Uh, and if I do an eval of URI manually here, we will see that we also get that uh, same error. So what is our URI? Well, this is our URI, so let me copy that. And let's try to work with this and see how we can make this um, how we can make this execute an alert for us. So um, we obviously want to go and eval this. And now we can, um, we can change this in some way to, to actually execute and to actually work. So that does not work. However, um, we can try to end it off with a semicolon and then have an alert. Will that do something? No, that doesn't work either. Um, in JavaScript, new lines are kind of strange. Will a new line do something interesting? Uh, we can try that out. So if I just get a new line there, not there, if I get it right here, what will happen? Oh, well, now we get an alert. So now we have eval a string uh, that, that, that gets an alert for us. The issue is that now that string contains a new line and our new lines allowed in the URL. Well, maybe if we encode this, it will work. So what if we do an encode URI of this exact string? So copy that and paste that in there. Now we get the encoded URI for that and I'm gonna just gonna copy that and try that out on a new page. So copy this and try that out here. And now we see that we get that alert. And that's great. However, we've seen this alert before. We need to alert document.domain. So let's try that out. Alert document.domain. And that works. We've bypassed this whole system of the Q variable only being allowed to be 24 characters long because it is less than 24 characters long. However, we just put the actual payload, what we're executing in a different place in the URI and executed that. And that is how we solve this challenge, right? Well, the rules state that the solution should work on the latest version of Chrome, which we just tested, and Firefox. But we haven't yet tested Firefox, so let's go over to Firefox and paste this URL in. And we see that that does not work. 
damn, that, that's a bummer. I, I wish it would work here. Um, and it seems that in Firefox, an, an SVG with an onload attribute that it's put onto the page using inner HTML is not being executed at all. Now, I don't know why that's the case. I couldn't find any reference to this in the documentation. So if you know that, then please let us know. Hold up, Pink Draconian from the future here. And I have to tell you that that was a lie. We now know why that SVG with the onload tag didn't work. And that's because it's a bug in Firefox. And this bug was actually found because of this XSS challenge. So how cool is that? Uh, Firefox will probably fix this over time. However, this is a really cool way to show that these XSS challenges can have some real life impact. Now, if you're interested into why this bug was found, then check out this CVE, because this is when this bug was introduced into Firefox. Let's get back to the video. But we need to find a way around that. And there are luckily a, a whole bunch of other attributes that can have an onload. For example, an iframe but an iframe is too long and we have to keep it short. So, okay, no iframe, what else? Well, uh, a style attribute can also have an onload. So if I make this a style attribute, then we see that we get our alert and that is great. Now, just to be sure, let's see that that also works on Chrome. And yes, it does. So that is great. And that is how we have solved this challenge. And that was it for this write-up. Today, we looked at the February Integrity XSS challenge which was an amazing one. We had to find a very, very short XSS payload. However, we quickly noticed that that was just impossible. So we had to find a way of making it longer without actually making it longer. And for that, we used a global variable URI, which we were allowed to modify in certain ways to get it to work. If you solved this challenge, then a huge congratulations to you. And if not, then keep on training because maybe next month you will find it. Again, follow us on Twitter if you want to be the first to know about these challenges and subscribe if you liked this video and want to see more of us. But that's it for this week. I hope to see you back in the next one.